Um, hi everyone, welcome to the Past and Present Performance Series. Today we are with Samra and she'll be showing us her awesome art. But before we do that, we'll be asking some questions and having a bit of an interview. So, hi Samra, how are you today? Um, yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. So the first question is your name, your background, and your role. Um, my name is Samra Shaquille, and I am um, technically Pakistani American. And that that what is that? What do you mean by background? All right. Well, tell us anything you want to us to know. We're um, here for you. Currently, um, as my background right now, I. Uh, graduated from Fairleigh Dickinson University, so uh, currently I'm an alumna, and I have my bachelor's degree. And so far, my role is that I hope to be a graphic designer, but more towards like illustration. And I hope to be in involved in the fine arts field, but also in a way so I can develop my own style. Yes, those are all my questions. All you know, the answers to that first question. That's awesome. So the next question is, when did you re uh, what did you receive your award for and when? Well, I received my award more towards um, more towards my high school years and mostly I believe I remember back in like 2015. I think it was the 37th. It was in the 30s range of like 30th, you know, Governor's Art Arts Awards. And I received the Governor's Art Award in education because uh, during that time, yes, I was going to Summit High School, but as a shared time student, I t attend the afternoon classes at Fair Union County Vocational Technical High School in the field of commercial arts. That's really cool. Um, did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy like having your time be split like that? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, otherwise the morning train, that would take and at 7 o'clock a.m. Usually, I after lunch, after, like, I'd say about, like, 11.30 a.m., the train, the bus comes, and I take it, and it drives us to the school, the other school. Okay. Um, so what did winning the Governor's Award mean to you? It, it really means a lot. It meant that I really... Um, achieved above and beyond in terms of my field and it really means that I really understand the field of visual arts. Mm -hmm. It means that I do understand the principles and elements of design which you know comes a lot when you're always observing artwork or you know graphic design concepts. That's that's really exciting for me. I I won it this year, and it was it was just like it showed me that this is what I'm meant to do. Did you did you feel that way? Yes. Wow, that's awesome. Um, so why do you believe the arts are more important now than ever? The arts are like are our form of expression, and they are uh, they have been used as in history as movements all throughout all you know all throughout the world, and. And there's also used to convey ideas and concepts. Um, so what impact did arts education have on your life? Um, impact, what impact does art education have on my life? Well, in when I was in high school, mostly I was mostly I studied like general history and um, in commercial arts. It was more like hands-on. In arts education, it's more like hands-on. You get into the field project itself. It's not like um, from a book. You learn um, by tactile learning, and through that, getting in the field in as itself, it really makes you want to think and really makes you like have more control, and it makes you. Um, mostly come as a journey to come as your own like self in the field. Yeah, that's very important, really understanding where you are and what you can do. And that's very exciting. So um, share something that inspires you during this time. You mean during in the past or currently right now? Currently right now. And it can also just be what inspires you in general. It can be both. Well, 
so far during this time in this pandemic, I just know I'm not alone. And all I know that this, and you know, what inspires me is that um, I can to keep trying no matter what. I think that's a really important message for everyone right now is, is really working hard and, and keeping positive during this like really scary time. And to not lose yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one last question before we get into your art. What are some words of wisdom you have for the class of 2020, whether it be the ones that won the governor's award this year or like graduating seniors? Well, for the graduating seniors, I know that this was not what you imagined for a graduation ceremony. Trust me, I went through the same thing. And I know that all of you guys really worked hard towards, you know, high school degrees or or the bachelor's, whatever, like, or, you know, associates. I don't know what kind of, how far you studied, but I want you to know that the world is, you know, congratulating you in this occasion. And and is to keep trying and keep you know believing and keep dreaming and keep doing don't don't give up you know you see how the world is currently and it's based on this this pandemic there has been certain things that prevented it from you know it you know you know how in the world in back in march when this pandemic was like an epidemic was one side of the globe if we all just continued to like quarantine then it would have been more contained but i'm just saying that to keep doing your best and by practicing social distancing eventually this pandemic will end i i agree completely just keep on doing the safety precautions and keep working hard to keep yourself sane and it'll all work out yes yeah Okay, everyone, so that was our interview. So now we're gonna move on to looking at her awesome art. So I will be saying bye until later, and I will be throwing up some slides. All right, so far, um, in my role, I mostly, um, mostly my role in the arts happened more towards high school. Um, um, in middle school, I was given general art classes and stuff, and more in high school, that's when, um, you know, my mentors and teachers there really want and saw that I was yearning for art, yearning for something more, and that's why they considered Union County Vocational Technical High School, and I was more in towards um, commercial art. Commercial art in that field, you generally, you know, lay things out in Adobe Illustrator, but you mostly complete the concepts by hand. Most of these concepts have like a theme for like competitions or, yeah, mostly for competitions. But in that competition, you get to develop what kind of idea you want to express that best complements that theme. Um, find oh right. Um, so far, this is an artwork based on my grandfather, and um, this has been, you know, this he he never saw this, in, if you know what I mean, and I, he really was a great factor in our in my golden childhood, and he was like he was a patriarch in our family. alongside my grandmother, who is the, the matriarch in our family. Oh, this was, this was, a, my grandfather was a photographer, and he, you know, in back in Pakistan, in his glory days, and he took a picture of this photograph, and basically, you know, this was based on one of my older cousins, who's now, you know, married, and older than me and they're more in the general higher adulthood but basically this is a funny picture about him and the toy that looks like a doppelganger of him and there's a black and white touch of color i just want to put you know mostly put color in the highest like points in this illustration this is the third version of black and white touch of color and I was the it was really tricky to it was really tricky to 
um, illustrate those trees, they took up a lot of my time. But I mostly um, made the color concept more towards that um, wagon with the donkey. And it really makes you wonder about the places, um, you know, how far in this landscape he will go. Um, um, may you please give me a moment? Oh, for this one, this was more towards my high school years. Back in spring 2018, they hold an annual um, exhibit. And I really wanted to, I was really more moved towards environmentalism. And all of us know, probably know how the weather has been changing for the worse and how the conditions of the earth are in critical condition. And in the past, in the past, this was, I want to recognize um, a person back in the more like 19th century, late 19th century, who really, you know, challenged um, huge corporations in America about what they're doing to the earth. Rachel Carson, she's an environmentalist. She wrote Silent Spring, which really like generally was the foundation for future movements in the 1970s and the change in that late 19th century of you know like 1960s 1970s 1980s were really like huge changing times and she wanted to express about how dangerous pesticides were like these harmful chemicals were for the earth but that's just one con mini concept about so many things that can harm the earth oh in this more close-up i wanted to have this rock as a monument to her so i wrote like her birth and death year and this wave is, is sh which is shaping the rock, you know, do its forceful pushes, is Rachel Carson's um, desire for the ocean. She always loved the ocean, even though she was land bound. Like she lived in a state where it was only surrounded by land. This is an interesting concept. I made, these are all made out of ceramics, clay. So I mostly use the tool to be able to trace the American map. But mostly I made this concept in a very um, human anatomy form way. As you see, looks I want to show about like the vein concept in the human body. But I also wanted to show there were these were supposed to in real life, if you saw this, there you know, I etched out words, words as insults, as chemical industry were saying to her. Uh, insults about women in the science field and her like you know insulting her um, in any way they could to bring her down oh, this is just my own concept this is made out of porcelain and um, it was my first time dealing with um, porcelain clay it's very high maintenance but I was wanted to I, I was really fascinated with the sun and I'm really drawn to how, um, you know, beautiful it is, but dangerous. The fact that, you know, how it supports our earth and our life on earth, but the fact that, you know, we can never go near or near it because it could kill us. So this is a safe depiction about the many different, like, you know, surfaces, surface, like textures of the sun. Well, this was more of a, you know, class, I did for ceramics, I feel like more in ceramics 3 or ceramics 4. Um, this was based on like my concept about the, the world, you know, how humanity has shaped the world and um, mostly more towards like diversity. Oh, this is, a, this is my um, second concept in dealing with porcelain clay. I had put a lot of effort into this. Um, I was just mostly for this was basically a project for a fusion project where you go into an art museum in New York and you have to be in, you know keep an eye out and you know feel inspired by two or two or three artists which I made a presentation of I don't know the two artists right now but then I kind of take their styles and you know turn it into a certain project. So I kind of, you know, really was inspired by a lot of vases back in ancient history. 
and but I kind of put my own spin by adding like a, a vine, like a floral vine twist on the top. Well, this um, artwork was how I got started in the painting. This was an acrylic paint um, artwork, and this was more like still life. And I was really drawn to the rough texture of this seed that was once alive. Oh, this was a concept more towards um, the last semester of my senior year. And this was based upon my perspective, my perspective about um, change, you know, being more open to change, being more flexible. And by doing that, you know, you know, so many opportunities in life becomes more brighter towards you. But if you keep stepping back, letting fear get hold of you, then, you know, your life will become much more darker. Um, this was more like a beginning, you know, monochromatic exercises to try to get you to be more, more like, you know, better, get better like hand at acrylic painting. And and basically these are two different shoes and I wanted to show how much women have shown that they're not just one category. There's so many different like diversity of, of you know, women across the world. Um, pardon me, it's super, um, um, this was, um, this, in graphic design, I designed this in Adobe Illustrator. This is based on a Bollywood movie, and I wanted to show the bond that withstands all the race, cultural troubles, like cultural slash political slash national troubles that this song was used in that movie of 2015. Um, this logo was de have developed as an exercise. It's not really based on a real thing. It was based on two of my professors, and they wanted to, you know, create. I they want to challenge us, us students, to create a design um, that really does, does more abstract, which covers so many different categories, and also includes them. Oh my gosh, I'm pretty sure all of you know about the SAT scandal back in 2019. Um, this was based on social response. Pretty sure in the world, graphic, some graphic designers choose to be involved in creating uh, illustrations like in the Time magazine about events across the world. And in the SAT scandal, I wanted to show that, you know, a lot of average people across the world who to want to to you know do extraordinary things in life you know work hard do their hard work and hard work and perseverance but uh, most um you know most wealthy class in in the world to you know may or may not have used their money to cheat their way through life and this is why i put the words um, as a circle around the mountain, which they want the average people want to get on top of. It's a shame. This is a poster design I created for. Um, first, I started as a poster illustration um, class, and then I had to, you know, more like tweak it, put it more in a more higher standard in portfolio prep in graphic design degree. And I want to really show how terrible plastic is, you know, affecting marine life. It's really graphic. Oh, this, uh, I actually read this book. This is based on uh, a more uh, contemporary remake of the classic book uh, based on the romanticism movement, of, which is Frankenstein. And one of the key moments in the book, and probably I've seen in many movies, is the reflection in the pond. I actually took the photo myself. Um, even though it was in daytime, I changed it into a day and to night filter, and um, my professor was able to push me in the right direction about which font to really, you know, still include the spooky, mysterious factor. This was based on a creative concept um, course in FDU graphic design. And I'm, you know, this was a project to get people 
to be inspired about voting, about making a difference. Because if you vote, you do, you still can make a change about who gets to represent, you know, the world and your nation. And I kind of chose a more contemporary pop art look in, in voting. And this was also inspired by Andy Warhol. Okay, so that is a selection of your art. You can find more of it on her <coughs> website, which I will put into the comments soon. And that's it. Did you have fun? Yeah, I did have fun. It was super, super interesting learning about the ideas behind the art, because when I was setting this up, I got to see them, and I got to, like, really focus on them, but I didn't really understand some of them, like, what the inspiration was. I understood, like, what they looked like, but I didn't know what the inspiration was. I think my favorite is the t-shirt design for the voting. I really like that one. That one's really good. Oh, my gosh. You know, before the concept was, like, a pair of glasses, and the cloth has a pattern for the well, I hope you have a wonderful night. I hope everyone who tuned in has a wonderful night. And be sure to check out and keep yourself posted on the Instagram because we will be bringing this stream back, but a little different, in like mid-September. So just watch out for that. And I hope you have a wonderful night. Stay safe. Thank you. Yes, stay healthy.